Finally, so first of all, I'm so excited because my hemoglobin was 14 and I have been working so, 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 so hard to get my hemoglobin up. <sighs> it's just such a relief. So I don't know if you guys all know, but you need to have your hemoglobin above a certain number in order to get surgery done. And if you don't meet that number, they will make sure that you hit it before you get your surgery. So whether they have to give you iron shots, which obviously you pay extra for, I think with my doctor, it's like an extra 70 USD. I don't know how many iron shots like you might need. I don't know if it's just one, but I didn't want to risk anything. And I have been trying so hard to get it up and I'm so happy that it's out of 14. So yay me. Um, my consultation went really well. Before I did the consultation, they made me see a psychologist. So I kind of figured that would happen. I seen the psychologist and basically she told me that after surgery, you go through quite an emotional roller coaster, which I kind of heard other girls talk about already. She did say that some people really struggle with the recovery. She said that basically it's kind of like a snowball effect. So for example, if you're focusing on negative energy and say you have anxiety or you're depressed, or if you have something mentally that you're struggling with, then it can start small, but when it keeps going and going and going because you keep focusing on it and focusing on it, it just gets bigger and it gets worse. And she also said that happens with the pain after surgery. So it could make the pain worse and also it could make your recovery longer, which I don't want and I'm sure you don't want either. Um, I know that stress plays a huge role on how your body acts and how your body carries out its functions. So I did expect that a little bit, but I didn't know that you can have more pain just because of the state of your mind. Like I had, I had no idea. Um, and she said, yeah, you will be in more pain when you're thinking about it. Um, and she kind of asks me, you know, do you have anxiety? And when you have anxiety, when you feel a certain way, how do you usually help? How do you usually um, deal with that? And what do you do? And then she tells you how you should do those things after your surgery when you're obviously feeling that way. And she reassures you that if you ever have any problems after surgery, that she'll be there. Um, just let the people at the recovery home know and she will make an appointment with you. So other than the stress and the emotional roller coaster that you deal with after surgery, she also wants to make sure that you are doing the surgery for yourself. Uh, you want this for yourself. Nobody's pressuring you into it. Nobody is um, telling you to do this and you're not going and getting crazy G-sized boobs uh, for a boyfriend or a fling or someone else is telling you that you need to do this to look good. They just want to make sure that you're doing this for you. You're of sane mind and that you will be able to have your wits about you for the recovery. And then after that appointment, I went to go see my doctor. So my doctor is Dr. Mejia, Dr. Luis Mejia, and I am really excited to have surgery with him because I have about four, five, I have five friends um, that actually went to him and I know of another girl on social media that my friends are friends with who actually went to him too. Um, so he is quite popular where I'm from and I am really excited to have him finally do my surgery. I have been wanting this for so long. I have had my eye on him for so long. I am super excited for him to work on me. Um, during my consultation, I kind of just expressed to him that I was, you know, worried about certain things that, you know, I shouldn't really be worried about, but basically... I was wondering how he's gonna remember what I want because I'm sure a lot of these doctors see 
so many people per day, how are you going to remember by the time you're doing my surgery? Like, are you going to take notes? Like, I don't know. Right. Um, so he only does a couple people tomorrow. So me and someone else, um, I'm going to be the first one. So he is going to also see me before my surgery. So I know that he's going to remember. He said, don't worry about that. Plus I will see him again before my surgery. Um, and he's going to mark me up and we can go over it again then tomorrow. So I have nothing to worry about. I'm just going to reiterate what I want tomorrow and get their surgery done. So what I'm getting is 360 lipo. So all around my torso, 360 tummy, back. Here, let me stand up so you can see. So all around the torso, I'm going to do and back so it includes like this area that i hate they're gonna do the bra fat which is like right here you know the fat that kind of like sticks out a little bit when you have your bra on we're gonna do thighs so they're gonna do this area and inner thighs is what i wanted and arm fat so the quote that i got actually has written extra whatever amount um for the thighs and extra for the arms, I thought that my final quote at the bottom included that price, but it doesn't, and it does say extra on the quote. Um, the only reason I thought that it was included in the final number is because I ended up getting like three different quotes, and every time I got a quote, it was a new number, a higher amount. Um, so I thought that higher amount was because the other things were added in, um, although it wasn't. <laughs> Um, I waited quite a while. So your quotes actually expire after, I believe it's six months. They may change that. I don't know. By the time you're watching this video, I don't know. Um, it's totally up to them. Mine expired after six months and when it expires, they give you a new quote with a new price. So if you guys are going to my doctor, which I, if you guys are going to my doctor, then just make sure that you don't get a whole bunch of quotes and book your surgery right, right away. Um, the reason that I waited was because I had a lot of questions and I do a lot of research and I just wanted to know ahead of time what I should be saving for, what amount I should be saving for, um, what exactly they had to say about if they thought that buy my pictures if I should gain weight for the surgery or lose weight or whatever, right? Um, I just like to know everything in advance and do all of my research on all of my doctors. Luckily, he was the first one that I researched and was recommended from my friends to go see him. And I talked to the coordinator and I didn't have to look for anyone else. I was, I was happy with what I heard from her. Um, so I stayed with that, but I did get, I believe, three different quotes. Um, they do go up every time. In order to secure your price, you have to book a deposit. The reason that I didn't book a deposit was because I didn't know when I was going to get my surgery done. So the thing is, you should give your deposit and then you book your surgery date, but you can move your surgery date. So if I would have just paid the deposit, booked a tentative date, I could have changed the date and still kept my deposit and I would have been fine with the original price. Um, I didn't know that. So now you guys know that hopefully I can help you in some way there. And I am adding in the arms and the thigh lipo. I'm also getting abdominal etching. So they just do etching of where your abdom abdominal muscles are and just kind of like pronounce it a little bit more. I did tell him that I don't want those like fat pockets. So some people, when they get abdominal etching done, it looks like they have fat pockets. Like it doesn't look like abs. It literally looks like either two lines of fat or rolls, or it looks like fat pockets. And I don't want that. So I told him that he said that it'll be okay. He's gonna do the way that I want. I'm really looking forward to that. Hopefully it turns out well. I did get some ab boards. Um, and I was told that I don't need them, so I don't need to use those. Um, when you have the app etching done, you don't want to ruin the etching. So you just want to put foams. But there's two things that a lot of people get for the lipo section, um, besides their garment. So foams and boards. 
The foams will go against your skin and the boards kind of help give you a little bit more compression and shape. There is a backboard that I'm going to be using. Actually, I will, I'll go get it and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so these are my foams that I actually got uh, from my girlfriend. Um, the ones that you need are bigger than this. So I didn't know that. I brought these ones just in case. I didn't know that I need more. So I actually need three of like the size of a piece of paper that comes out of a printer. Like I would need three of those size. So I actually bought two of them. Um, I can't show them to you because I don't get them until my surgery. But so they'll go in your Faha garments. And then I'm going to have, or sorry, right here. And then one on the other side and then one in the middle. So the boards look like this. This is my ad board that I actually don't even need. So I got this for nothing. Um, although what it does is it gives you compression. So you would put it like this in your Faha and it gives you more compression and support underneath your Faha. Then I have this one. So this one is for my back. It has this little strip here and that's going to help shape your back a little bit. So you want to put this right above your butt with this part on the skin. So you can see this side doesn't have it, but if you put this part right over your butt to create that little, to create more of a shape, but like a little divot there, more of a shape, it's not going to put a huge divot in your skin. So don't worry about that, but it just helps with the shaping and a little bit more compression. So that's what you do with that one. Um, so yeah, when you get the ab etching, you don't need the ab board. I didn't know, and I got this all in a pack anyways. It came with these two also for the sides. Um, if they want some more foams, then maybe I'll bring these ones just in case they wanna use that. Um, but I am getting the two bigger size foams um, from the office and I will get them like right after my surgery. They will put them on me. They will put me in the garment. And another thing they want me to bring is one of those like little boppy pillows. Um, a lot of people use them for like babies, like newborn babies. I have one, I brought it from home. Uh, they do sell them there, but I have one that I am going to bring with me. Hopefully it's good enough. I asked her if I could bring my BBL pillow, like this, the rectangle BBL pillow. But she said no, um, she doesn't recommend using them. And I'm not exactly sure why, but every single time I seen people from the office that just got one of those BBLs done, they all had the boppy pillow. And it looks like this. Although the ones that they have are a lot thinner, they look like, like this is, this is that big, that thin but the ones that they have seem to look like that. And I don't know why you sit on those because you're not really supposed to sit after a BBL, I thought, um, but they sit on them. Like they sit like right on them. And like my butt is still on the pillow. It's still being compressed. So I don't know why they let you sit on these, but I guess that's something I'll have to ask after my surgery. Um, so I am going to bring that. She wants me to bring that. Um, the lipo stuff, the, or sorry, the lipo foams um, and my medicine. So I have to bring my medication. Um, if you have any medication that you take regularly and if it's okay for the surgery, like you can take that. You are going to stay overnight in the um, facility. So I am all set for my surgery now. So I am super excited. I have the rest of the day to go and relax, thank goodness, because it's going to be a long time before I can sit on this butt again, so I am just enjoying sitting as much as I can because I'm not going to be sitting much after. I'm not going to probably sit on that boppy pillow too much. I'm going to try to stand as much as I can, um, and I'm just going to go lay by the pool for a while, I think, and just enjoy um, my last day before I'm in excruciating pain. I, I went to the, um, 
the clinic around 10.30 and I got back around 2.45, I want to say about 2.45. Um, so it's not a full day of testing like yesterday was and I'm feeling way better, a lot more refreshed and I am ready to relax, enjoy the rest of my little vacation before my uh, horrible recovery and I am gonna go make the most of it. So I'll see you guys later. Bye. <laughs>